Thank you, Mary, for that very kind introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. What a privilege it is to speak in such a terrific venue about a topic that shaped this very region's modern history. First and foremost, I'm a potato farmer, and today I'm going to talk to you about how I believe we can counteract some of the agronomic and market challenges the UK potato industry face. I would like to say a massive thank you to my co-sponsors, McDonald's UK and Ireland, and the Royal Norfolk Agricultural Association, because without them, my Nuffield journey would not have been possible. Both have been brilliant in sharing contacts and their wisdom along the way. I'm going to start my talk today discussing risk, something that all farmers and business owners in the room will be very familiar with. Potato growers are no different. We face two macro-scale risks. One is the marketplace. Who, where, and for what price am I going to sell my product for? The second risk is the growing risk, or the agronomic risk. How do I achieve full marketable yield without my crop dying or being eaten by something? And it's these two risks that I've delved into on my travels. I've been fortunate to go across the USA, Canada, and Northern Europe, and I've met many brilliant contacts and business who've discussed firsthand some of the challenges they face and some brilliant solutions on how they're getting around the risks that I've just discussed. So I'd like to give everyone a bit of a potato history lesson here, because there is a slight irony that I'm talking in a session about new cropping opportunities. The potato has been in the British diet since the 1500s, and has been the staple carbohydrate that we eat. However, sales and volume have been in decline as people have traded out of potatoes into alternative carbohydrates, such as rice and pasta. What's also changed in the last two decades particularly is how we consume potatoes. We've moved away from buying whole potatoes, preparing them at home, to buying ready-made, prepared potato products, be it chips, crisps, waffles. So this gives us a bit of a feel for where the UK market is today. So we're a four-pronged industry that's been pretty well established, you could say, for the last 20 or 30 years. There's the wear bag sector, which generally serves uh, restaurants and the fish and chip shop sector. There's the pre-pack, which is retail and supermarkets. There's the processing, the newest part of the potato sector. And then there's the seed, which the UK have always been very strong traditionally in. And without boring people with lots of tables and graphs, if we look at the table to the top left, that shows the volume that the UK has produced over the last 10 years or so. And I've put a red line in there of where I believe supply and demand balances. And you'll see that in a number of those years, supply has outstripped the demand. And as a result, we've seen prices of potatoes below the cost of production. What's happened on the back of this, we've gone from being an industry of 3,000 growers in the early 2000s to nearly 1,000 today, purely because that risk and reward, the return on capital, the profit margin that potato farmers has received has not been strong enough. So my first thing was to look at why we've seen this market decline. And it hit me straight away when I was on my travels in Northern Europe. And I call it the world French fry invasion. I was blown away at the scale of this sector. We have been left behind in this transition. The US, the Canadians, and the Belgians and Dutch have become chip-producing beasts. They can procure and process potatoes so efficiently and freight them around the world at highly competitive prices. And as a result, the UK have said, we'll stand back, we'll buy those cheap Belgian fries, we like the taste of them, and we have become the second largest importer of prepared potato products in the world. I repeat that, a potato-producing nation like the UK has become the second largest importer of frozen potato products. Now look, is it as simple as just building a big chip factory somewhere in the UK? And the answer to that is no. 
These things cost hundreds of millions to build. And generally, the technology is owned by massive multinational companies. However, on my travels, I had the chance meet to meet Alison McCain. Some would call him the godfather of their French fry production. Every one in five potatoes that you eat um, has been produced by that McCain's business. And he spoke pretty candidly about the UK, discussing some of the challenges of export with us being an island nation, but he also highlighted that we do have some long-term strengths. One is a pretty stable political and economic outlook. Some might argue with that. <laughs> the second is demand. I've just highlighted we've got a million tons of um, imports that are coming into the country. And third is long-term climate suitability. Now, this is going to be a key point because much of the growth in the global French fry sector is expected to come from Africa, Asia, and South America, where much of their climate is going to be challenged around potato production. The second part of the fresh potato decline is quite a sad story. Potatoes in their whole form are now perceived to be bland, starchy, a boring product, even unhealthy. And we've got this so wrong. We've done a terrible job as a potato industry at marketing our product. In its whole form, the potato is the most nutritious, carbon-efficient carbohydrate that we can eat in the diets. Now, I know that's an absolute mouthful, and I'm going to repeat it, because if no one remembers anything I say today, Please take this one away and tell a few others. But the potato, in its whole form, is the most nutritious, carbon-efficient carbohydrate that we eat in the diet. Now, on my travels in Canada, I saw how the little potato company had managed to add a bit of vibrancy to the packaging and market the potato product much better than we do in the UK. They've managed to t sell the story of nutrition, and they've managed to grow sales in the salad potato sector. The other area that we must target to rival other carbohydrates is convenience and consistency. This is where we fall badly behind. A jacket potato that takes one hour to cook in the oven is just too long for the modern household. But inventions like the air fryer can really actually transform that cooking time, and we can start hitting some of those convenience targets. Consistency is the other area. When you eat rice or pasta, 99 times out of 100, you get the same experience. With a potato, depending on the variety, the time of year you buy it, even the shop you buy it from, you get such a contrast in that eating experience. And if you're a consumer, you get a bad, bad potato, the next time you go to the shops, you buy rice or pasta, simple as that. So how do we improve some of the growing practices and, and improve the, 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 the offer that we're giving to our consumers and for me, breeding is the way to success. I was very fortunate to go to many of the breeding stations in the Netherlands, Meijer and Agrico, and I was absolutely amazed by the technology advancements and the AI that they were using to bring new replicate varieties to market. They highlighted to me that until, until five years ago, they were purely focused on yield in their breeding programs. They're now looking at ways that we can grow low-input potatoes, that taste great and give the consumer that brilliant experience. So varieties are going to be key to that success. Now, I'll be honest here. When I thought about how I was going to get around some of the growing challenges, I thought that I would just step onto a farm somewhere in the US and Canada and just find the solution to, uh, to the growing problems. And it's not quite as easy as that, as you probably all know. But I, I saw, whether it be lack of access to good people, legislation blocks, pest disease pressures such as wireworm and potato cyst nematode, they're all varied and quite unique depending on the area. But there was one key thing, and we've heard a lot of discussion about it already today in other projects, but climate is going to shape the global potato sector, particularly water. Too much water in key periods such as harvest and, and planting and not enough during the growing seasons is shaping the sector. I've put that simple graph up there because really the fruit growing, it's as simple as that. Everything else you can build around it. C plus sunlight plus soil times water equals yield. But we do need to look at ways that we can build resilience into our soils and capture some of that water 
that we can use for irrigation on potato crops if we're going to be successful as a UK industry. So in my simple mind, I thought to myself, what and how do we get around some of these growing challenges as businesses? And for me, I just identified what I thought I saw from the best businesses I visited on my travels. And for me, they did these three things really well. Number one, rotation. Being from the Holcomb Estate, Cook of Norfolk, the four-course rotation, it's in my DNA. But the wider and more diverse a rotation is, the better a farming system will be. And this is going to be key within the potato growing sector. The second one is a little bit of a chicken and egg scenario, timing and capacity. Because we need that fair return on capital to allow us to reinvest in infrastructure. But it's so essential. We've got tighter weather windows to operate, to maximize quality, and make sure we deliver a great product to our consumers. We need to focus on that timing. And thirdly, it's a Nuffield cliche, everyone knows this, but it's the best people. The best people, we need to harness them and make sure that we build our businesses around them because they can recognize, they can resolve and react to the problems that, that, we, that we face. So I'd like to leave the room today with a little bit of optimism about the UK potato sector. I've highlighted some of the risks that we face but I do believe that there are signs and glimmers that UK farmers can have potatoes as a, a strong cropping opportunity going forward. First and foremost, we do have to address that risk reward, but recent contract prices, post inflation, do look like slightly better returns, and we need to build back stronger looking at four core areas within our industry. One, we have to embrace the processing sector, whether we like it or not. This is where the growth around the world is going to be in potato products. We should be trying to erode some of that import volume. I believe we can produce these potatoes competitively, so we just need to encourage investors that the UK is the place to build one of these big factories. The second one is we need to halt the fresh sales decline. We need to champion the potato as a product in the diet and really target convenience and consistency to win back those consumers that we've lost. Three varieties, they're going to shape the sector. I've seen firsthand you know, there's exciting technology coming through. We need to embrace that. I don't want to be stood on a stage talking about Maris Piper and King Edward in 10 years' time. As these new varieties come through, we need to embrace them because they're going to be good. And four, it's what defines us as the best businesses. Rotation, timing, capacity, and infrastructure, and of course, the best people. Thank you for listening, and keep eating spuds. <laughs>